All right, my friends. So um, I got to ask the question today if somebody should still buy 7000 series AMD GPUs um, this close to the uh, to the next cards launching. And to be completely honest with you guys, I don't know if I'm 100 percent like in that whole wait till the next one, wait till the next one, because here's the here's the thing. The rumors say that AMD's next GPU is going to be 4080 7900 XTX power for 500 bucks. Now, here's the thing, guys. Rumors are rumors. And if you can find a good deal on 7900 XTX, that, that card is still going to be significantly better <clears throat> than any mid-range card that's going to come out. Like the power, like, like the overall performance and everything might be, might be pretty close, but your 7900 XTX, your 7900 XT, and your 7900 GRE, 7800 XT, these are all going to still continue to be very good cards. Now, the only difference that might have like a major impact in your buying decision for waiting for a next generation GPU is there's always the chance that you're going to get new features. But in AMD's case, guys, and and I say this pretty like, okay, yeah, AMD, they do have more of a track record of like bringing their their uh, their older generations of cards kind of forward as long as as long as they're able to. Now the 6000 series GPUs uh, got the beta fe beta features for AMD's fluid motion frames and all of that stuff. Um, you know FSR three frame generation, all of that stuff. Like all of that stuff is available on your 6000 series GPUs. Uh, where where's Nvidia now? That there I would be like maybe wait for the next generation but as we've seen going from the 30 series to the 40 series there was a massive markup in price and then downgrade overall across the board from from like their card stack but then they also you know the chances of the 50 series coming out and having features that the 40 series is not going to be able to use that is a real possibility my friends that is definitely a real possibility that you might get stuck with uh with something that doesn't perform as good but nvidia is gonna nvidia bro you're they're they're gonna they're gonna do whatever they want with their prices they are the market leader they're they, they are the undisputed champions they're going to nickel and dime you regardless i definitely feel more comfortable recommending 7000 series gpus even with the, the uh, even with the next gen rdna4 cards like literally on the horizon you do need to, you do need to understand that yes 100% AMD's RDNA 4 is going to launch with AI upscaling that is probably a given will it be backported to the 7000 series GPUs I believe so I, I honestly believe so the 7000 series cards do have AI accelerators they will be able to utilize the AI upscaling to what extent probably i mean like we don't really know but you can literally download ai applications and use your 7000 series gpus for inference even the 7600 xt or xt 16 gigabyte model was marketed as an amd card or as an amd ai card like it does have the ability to utilize ai so it would be dumb like it would be like let's put it this way if amd was to launch rdna4 ai upscaling and did not have a way for it to work on the 7000 series cards that would be a that, that would be bad for them that would be bad now obviously rdna4 will have better ray tracing support obviously but you're still kind of at that you know like if you're getting into any amd 7000 series card this is why i easily can recommend like the 7000 series cards rdna2 does have the ability to do ai ai things as well just nowhere near as good as like the 7000 series cards so maybe those can still utilize you know fsr4 to some some degree i mean xbox series x can utilize direct ml um, you can utilize direct ml on rdna2 rdna3 so the ability to utilize that is absolutely there now how good is it going to be compared to the new generation of cards probably not as if not as performant obviously but you're still looking at 
you know, you're still looking at 256 bit bus with the 8800 XT. You're still looking at anywhere from 16 to 20 uh, gigs of VRAM, obviously GDDR6. Um, obviously it's gonna have better ray tracing performance, you know, better ray tracing cores, um, and definitely probably upgraded built-in AI um, um, uh, capabilities. But if you are in the market right now, um, obviously, if you're if you're coming from consoles, I, yeah, definitely buy whatever 7000 series cards you can get into. Right now, you're they're, they're, they're at steep discounts. You can get a really good discount on any of these cards, and those are going to more than freaking surprise you and blow your freaking mind for a while. Like you're you're going to be good long enough to like get your feet under you, start figuring out what's going on in the PC space. 100%. I definitely recommend buying a 7000 series GPU if you are coming from consoles and you are upgrading. Now, if you're already on PC and you're sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, I need power. In my whole freaking two years, a couple years of PC gaming and PC testing with all the money that I've spent buying these GPUs and testing them, the uptick, my friends, honestly, is not so big that you're like, oh my gosh. Like if you buy a 4090, that is the most powerful card on the market right now. And the 7900 XTX is literally within striking distance of that. And so the uptick from like say 3090 Ti to 4090 was was pretty big, it was, was a pretty decent gap. But that is at their top end. If you're looking at like the power between like a 3090 Ti and 4080 Super, it wasn't as big, but still you're, you're still at like, oh my gosh, I need to spend a lot of money. Like your 4070 and your 3080 10 gig and stuff like that, the biggest difference is probably the VRAM, but the 3080 10 gig is probably still a better card than the 70, than the 4070 easily. It's got a better, it's got a bigger bus. Um, it's got, you know, pretty fast memory. I mean, that, that 3080 10 gig was an absolute 1440p beast, like, and it still is. So you got to look at this as like the upgrades generation over generation are not that high unless you go top end. Now, honestly, guys, an 8800 XT, if this thing is, you know, performs within a range of like 7900 XTX and 4080 Super, at, yeah, like I don't necessarily think that like you would be at like a severe disadvantage if you bought a 7800 XT. I, I don't. Like I, I feel like... I mean, obviously you're going to get more bang for your buck if you wait because it'll be around, around the same price, but you're, you're only going up. I mean, you are going up. You are going up pretty decently, but at the end of the day, like you're still within striking distance of that overall power range. And if you're on 1440p, you're probably going to be just fine. Now, that's, that's kind of my input on that. Like I'm not against buying current gen products, even with the next gen product on the, on the horizon, but you just never know. And there's always so many leaks and so many rumors and so much freaking just, just everything right when we start getting close to a new generation that it makes it so people are like less willing to buy stuff. In the PC space, at least in my, my brief experience so far, I can tell you guys that honestly, man, it's it's just it, it it's pretty messed up. Now I definitely think that five hundred dollars for seventy nine hundred XTX power is going to be pretty good. But obviously, if you spend like another hundred or a couple hundred dollars more and you get a seventy nine hundred XT or seventy nine hundred XTX right now, I think you're still going to have a, a much like you're going to have a more stable experience across the board. Um, just just in terms of being able to utilize that raw power and and it, it is there and with each upgrade and update like the amd cards do get better they do tend to um, gain more performance and gain more just overall like functionality they get more freaking <laughs> they get more features then yeah it's pretty cool guys like i'm not against you like i'm not against buying 7000 series gpus i think they are a good value i think that you will be able to utilize them well into the future and you you, you just got you you just have to um you just kind of have to see what what your needs are and see if that's going to meet your needs if you're just wanting a 1440p gpu like this and this is 100 percent honest if you just want something to play at 1440p with max settings any of these freaking cards are going to work all the way down to your 4060 like all of these cards are going to deliver 
a 1440p experience like that's where we're at we are at the golden range at the golden age of 1440p um a lot of the esports titles already run at like super duper high frame rates that most people are going to easily be able to max out at 1440p 165 hertz refresh rate that's the thing that's the beauty like you're in the golden age right now all of these gpus are going to do good your only real problem is going to be when it comes to single player games my friends and the more triple a you go the more like of a um, the overall experience you know you can run a lot of these games at really high frame rates already on the hardware we have right now today so it our game's going to continue to grow and get more i most of the most of the features that are really dragging down performance is going to be like your ray tracing and stuff like that so if those in, are important to you then yeah, you're gonna wanna wait or you're gonna wanna go with NVIDIA or something like that. But other than that, if you just wanna play games and be able to play them better than what the consoles are gonna play them, yeah, any of these GPUs are absolutely incredible. So, all right guys, if you like this content, do not forget to like it, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.